Bonjour mes amis. Hi guys, oh you want to say it? Hi guys, bonjour mes amis. So Simon is back. He went to get his uh, Gérard uh, Perigo Laureato blue dial, as you can see. It's not the red dial. <laughs> and uh, I, I was with him when he did the deed at uh, the authorized dealer. So Simon, it's been a few, it's been about a week. How do you feel? Exactly day for day, one week on the wrist. I, I still feel amazed about it. I, I like everything about it. And especially today, like you may see, I'm wearing blue. <laughs> so yeah, blue on blue, tone on tone. Coordination happening. Exactly. Uh, well, what can I say? Like, just just look at it. It's it's a, it's a stunner. Um, so why did you choose uh, the GP? Why did I choose GP? That's a very good question. And I think we need uh, a little bit of uh, honesty here. Uh, you, you turned down the AP. <laughs> <laughs> you turned down the Patek. <laughs> well, uh, I tried the... Uh, uh, Audemars Piguet, I think back in 2016 at one of the boutiques here uh, on Queens Road. And at that time, it was already very difficult to get. But I still managed to, to try one on my wrist. And I left my name, obviously, like six years later, no news. <laughs> uh, I wanted an integrated uh, steel bracelet. I wanted a sport watch with an integrated steel bracelet. And, you know, I was not necessarily thinking about Gérard Perigo. But because I like to do those uh, watch runs from time to time uh, here on Queens Road in Hong Kong, and one day this kind of caught my attention, and I just decided to put it on my wrist just to try it. And I, I was thinking about it still, and at some point I had a discussion with my wife, she saw it, she liked it so much, and she was kind of giving me the go to a Try it again, not only to try it again, but to go get it. <laughs> That's the kind of wife we all wish we had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she never gave me the go for anything. <laughs> it's a very manly watch, even though uh, when you look at it, it's, it's a bit blingy and shiny. So do you want to try it? Yeah, I'll try it on. Yeah, yeah. So by the way, wrist watch check. I'm wearing the King Seiko video. Maybe it has dropped already. <laughs> Uh, our video it will drop soon. There you go. So, and this one, how long did you have to wait to uh, to get it? Uh, from the day I gave the deposit to the day I got it, I think that was more or less two weeks, maybe two three weeks. Uh, I was told initially by uh, the sell rep that I will have to wait maybe a month. Or something but they always say that uh, yeah. here and uh, it comes very fast actually it's to manage expectation but as you remember when we shot the first video we've done together I've told you that this is the next one and I'm not sure when it's gonna come and the day you release the video I received a, a whatsapp message from my cell rep and she told me it's here so the next day we we went together you and I and we we just took it can you tell us a bit about the, the beautiful movement here yeah, so as you can see, it's can like an arabesque, right, on the on the rotor. It's like a, a coat and then an arabesque within it. Um, I'm not sure I express it properly. So you have obviously a coat de Genève, and then on the rotor, it's uh, it's. I'm not sure if it's real gold. I Sprinkled I in it. Yeah. If you give it a little shake, you will see that it's a unidirectional rotor. And if you hit it right, then it will start spinning uh, yeah, and not stop. Yeah. One of the directions. But, but, but do you feel it on the wrist when you do no, that? No, no, no. It's not like a, like a Valjou chronograph. No, no, no. Because the rotor is not that uh, Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't feel it at all just uh, doing this. It is really, really well finished. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, this watch... Uh, the original one came out in the 70s uh, before Patek did the Nautilus. That's correct. So I've done a little bit of research as well when I've started to get interested into the brand. Obviously, uh, Gérard Perigo, uh, 1791, La Chaux de Fonds. Uh, it's a very old, one of the oldest uh, Swiss uh, manufacturer. Uh, as for this uh, model, the very first incarnation was in uh, 1975. So I think that was three years after uh, Audemars Piguet, but two years before the Ingenieur from IWC, as well as the Nautilus. 
back then was it uh, 38 millimeter 37 something like that or was it already I this one is 41 this one is 42 actually 42? i think in 2016 for the 225th anniversary they release they re-released it uh in 41 millimeter and then i think in 2017 they started to release it in 38 42 uh, I think there's a couple of other sizes, but this one is a 42. You know, your wife is going to ask for one as well. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's funny you mentioned she's looking at uh, those uh, those Casio uh, Oaks kind of uh, of watch these <laughs> days. <laughs> Have you seen it in, in person? It's quite um, interesting. I don't think so. I haven't really looked for it. Mm -hmm. uh, it it's very, very tidy presentation. Uh, when you compare with uh, the Vacheron overseas, for example, uh, I really like the transitions uh, on the case. Very, very s soft to the to the eye. Let's zoom in on the. So is that Clou de Paris? It's uh, Clou de Paris, exactly. I think it's hobnail. We say in English, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's different than the Petite Tapisserie or Grand Tapisserie. If you take a look at the exact shape, it's more like a, a pyramid. Yeah, you, you can see as I as move it, how it, yeah, it's pyramid. It catches four, every detail is, is four sides to it. The date is also interesting. The the way uh, the the font and the way it is integrated, very close to the to the dial, which is always a a good sign. And you know, this one is a hundred meter water resistance. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the Royal Oak is only fifty meters. Correct me if I'm wrong. So it's a, it's a, yeah, I think so. Uh, maybe depends on the, the model, but mo usually the uh, sports model from uh, <laughs> Patek and uh, AP are, are not that resistant. Although I think Patek now goes to 120 on some of the watches. So this watch you can wear pretty much anytime, anywhere, any occasion. Any sequence? Oh, I think it's this one first. Yeah, this one first. Let's get it properly. You need some help? It's hard to do <laughs> on the camera. <laughs> it's easier to do in, in person. Yeah, and then the other one. There you go. Perfect fit. You went back to uh, get it refitted, I think. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was telling you before we shot the video. So uh, what happened is the day I picked it up, you know, here in Hong Kong, the temperature and the humidity level is always ever changing. And on that day, I feel it these days. It's very difficult to get the right it's fit. It's so difficult. It's so difficult. And uh, actually, the very first fit, the it was a bit too loose for me, and I felt a bit unsecured. Even now, but I'm, I'm in a freezing cold room, so my wrist is really tiny right now. Uh, and uh, yeah, I can tell that this is the the right fit since we have the same wrist. You want to be able to put your finger like this inside then when in, in, in the morning you'll be really tight actually or not really tight but as, as tight as you want to as you want to get and that's the way to to size your watches in hong kong going from a freezer to uh to a sweaty environment yeah it suits me uh, i'll keep it for the weekend <laughs> uh, i'm going to the beach though it's perfect oh. <laughs> you could yeah, so you're going to have to get used to the, the, the first scratches, the big gashes. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. If you take a look at the at the H links, uh, they're set and finish, but the uh, the other center links, they're very well, uh, the doom link, they're polished, right? So, but that's something every time you touch it, every time you manipulate the watch, it leaves like your fingerprints on it, uh, especially on those uh, center link. It's a 42 that wears really well. Yeah, because it, the, yeah. Not that it's comparable, but I had never any problem wearing my Maurice Lacroix Icon, mm. uh, which is 41, uh, I think. Well, the, the Royal Oak, uh, I think it's a bit big at f uh, the, the large one. I prefer the Jumbo uh, 39. 
on my wrist, this one, the Gérard Perigo, wears much better than the Hoya look. Would be great to have them both side by side to, uh, to compare exactly. Let's go ask the, the shop there on the corner if they can lend <laughs> uh, 15500 to, to us. <laughs> and good loom at night. I guess it's a Super Luminova? Or do they have a special sauce? I'm not too sure, but the loom is, is good. Uh, yeah, you can even see it now, actually. Yeah. There you go. Should I? Sh is this the one? Yeah. Nice. So you even get a decent loom shot shot now on uh, optic <laughs> watch reviews. Well, it's great to have uh, this watch in in hand for the first time. Thank you so much for for sharing. Anything else you you want to to add? Um, yeah, maybe a couple of things. Actually, I, I'm still very much in love with it. So it's the honeymoon period for sure. Uh, but after one week on the wrist, there's few, very little minor thing that uh, are not perfect, perfect. I would say, well, at first the fit was not perfect, but thankfully when I went back to the authorized dealer yesterday, they, they did the little correction. So I, I had to remove uh, four links. I think one of them was uh, half links. But now the, the fit is much better. Something you may look at is ear. It's a bit sharp. The logo itself. Be careful because it's... Do you feel it? No! Oh, oh. Finger! Oh. It's <laughs> the one I used to <laughs> press the remote. <laughs> but do you feel a bit the oh, sharpness yeah. inside uh, the logo? I know what you mean, yeah. Just inside the logo. The rest is... There's not, not much sharpness to it, but just inside yeah, the logo. Yeah, I feel like, it. I know what you mean. Mm -mm. So the very first time I kind of buckle it, I slide inside the logo and I feel, oh God, this is quite sharp. But yeah, that's that was yeah, because it thing. is engraved inside. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah. And then maybe something else. You can you can on this is a screw down crown, so you can unwind it and you can play with it, and you you will see when you use it to wind. The winding, winding is smooth, it is pops. Do you feel? It's so different than any other. Yeah, it doesn't really click. It's more like a slightly coarse, but not to the point of an ETA 2824 oh, kind not. of, a but it's kind not of feel. It's not buttery, buttery smooth, you know? It's a bit... It is smooth, but I think I, I've learned not to really uh, so <laughs> mind anymore. About, yeah. Every watch is a bit, uh, a bit different. Quite a long course to, to mm. uh, thread it back in. Power reserve would be 45 hours on this? For the uh, 54. 54. Yeah, okay. 54. It's for Earth's 54. 191 components, if I'm not mistaken. Anything special on the anti-magnetic front? Not sure. Let's find out. I have a <laughs> big magnet there on the camera. Oh, no, <laughs> let's not <laughs> try the microphone. that. Do you mind you just push it a little bit away from the camera now? <laughs> That's a beautiful timepiece. I'm so much in love with it. You know, even this week, one of my work colleagues was like, oh, you need to put your Speedy on it for Speedy Tuesday. And I was almost hesitant to put back my Speedy, even though I really love my Speedy. But, you know, I think that's the only day this week I, I was not wearing my Gérard Perigo. It was on Tuesday. Otherwise, rest of the week, every single day, was wearing it. All right. So in uh, conclusion, you love it. In conclusion, I do love it very much indeed, and uh, I think it's going to be difficult to remove from from my wrist for the the coming weeks, if not months. Yeah, it's true that when when you love something, uh, as you were saying with the the, the speedy there, uh, you, when when you feel good with a watch, you don't feel like removing it, even though it's it's uh, Seco Saturday, Speedy Tuesday. <laughs> so sometimes I, I do feel the same. Uh, well, it's a good indication that uh, the watch is. Uh, it's perfectly suited for you. Looks great on your wrist. Congratulations. And thanks for sharing. Uh, anyone has any question about the uh, GP Laureato, let us know in the comments. Merci, Simon. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir. Au revoir.